Hello, Menis. Welcome to Suchava. Thank you a lot for your interview. Thank you for the invitation. What can you say about money? Everybody needs money. <laughs> Very good question. What about money? Is it good or bad? Money is not good, it's not bad. Money is money. Anybody can have money if they want. My feeling about money is, is very interesting. If you care about, your, about yourself enough, yes, you will do something and the money will come to you. Money represents how much you love yourself, how much you care about yourself. Because if I don't care about me, I will not have money. If I care about me enough, I will have money. And there's enough money for everybody. How did you make your money? Did you sit and write in dreams only? Not only. What did you do? You worked hard. I worked hard, yes. That's what you need. strategy. Between you and what you want is one word, one word only is action. But uh, now people don't want to work hard. They prefer to read books and hear nice things and look at you and see you successful. Tell me what you did and I'll do the same. They don't know what happened to you. I am sure you had many sleepless nights. I'm sure before you sign deals, you were terrified. Anything can go wrong. I am sure there are days and nights you worked and worked and worked. Don't tell them write their dreams. They will be in a dream world. I don't believe in any methods whatsoever to get what you want. I, 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 this is what my, my personal opinion. If you do the right thing in this life, the money will come. Without you trying to do anything. If you work hard, the money will come. There is no such a thing as vocation. You, you, you can tell from your life you've done so many things. Do you have a very specific vocation to do? I had seven careers before. You can do anything you want. If I like something, this is not vocation? Everything is a vocation. Why do we have to focus our life on one thing to do and uh, pretend this is our purpose in life? We can do anything. Because I want to feel good when I make something. I want to feel happy. What, are you feel happy doing this now? Now, yes, I feel happy. So this will be your vocation. What is your definition of happiness? I, I, I think we are uh, getting ourselves into trouble about the word happiness. If I seek happiness, that means I'm miserable. We are made up saying that we have to be happy. We read in books, everybody should be happy. Uh, if you are doing, if you are at peace with yourself, you are naturally happy. We don't have to do anything. And there are many things in life we can do that can make us feel okay. But do we have to do something to be happy? This is the question. No, depression is something very different. It's, it's nothing to do with happiness. People who are depressed, they have something happened to them. They have not fixed it yet or solved it yet. And they're still looking in the past, not looking at now and the future. This is a different thing. So I wouldn't measure or compare happiness with depression. They are two different things altogether. The meaning of depression is actually in the world itself. We have been deprived of something. Something has been taken away from us and we want it back. And everybody has a depression for a very simple reason. Very simple reason, not complicated at all. They are deprived of love or deprived of being with somebody or they are alone. Or they were alone before and they have not recovered yet. And often, in most cases, it's during childhood. Do you have a depression? Me? Yes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you don't have? <laughs> no. Well, I don't know if you heard me in one of my talks talking about this. Depression is a Western invention. It never existed before. The, the, it's a name, it's a word. Uh, in, in the West, when uh, we don't understand something, we give it a name. Once we have a name, we have a condition, and we will try to fix the condition. And I, I was brought up in, uh, in Egypt, 
And until 1960, we didn't know what depression is. But somebody came from abroad and told us there's actually something called depression. Everybody became depressed after that. And then we started buying medicine for depression and we forgot the cause. What actually caused the depression for the first place, if there is such a thing? People had many things happen to them in the past, not recovered yet. And they cannot recover from it. So they give it a name and become a condition and they take treatment and becomes like a fashion. So actually, I don't even know if people understand what depression is. It has no meaning whatsoever. What yeah. about the victimization? Uh, the, the culture we live in promotes victimness. 100%. And now uh, this is coming to Eastern Europe in a very big way. It used to be in the West, it's coming. I'll give you a very simple example. In England at the moment, we take money from the people who are working and give it to the people who are not working. Can you imagine that? What does, what does that do to the people? Now you work hard, you pay taxes, and they give it to the person who is not working. It's different because you don't get so much and not for so long. But once the system established in Europe, it will be like this. In England, you can go forever. Yes? I, now I'm not talking about people who cannot work. I'm talking about people who can work, but they can get money and not work. So what we're actually doing to these people is this. We are helping them to be victims. It starts in the family. I always say this in the courses. When, if you have kids, most parents have kids coming home and you have two children at home. One of them is very happy and one of them is very sad. Which one is going to get your attention? The sad one. And what are you doing? You're helping the sad one to be a, a victim. As simple as that. I give sweets to the sad one and trying to make him feel better. And the one who's working hard and okay, we leave them like this. I would go to the happy one. I show the sad one, if you want to get what you want, you need to do this. Without giving them a lecture and tell them what to do. The whole culture we live in in the West promote victimness everywhere. People have become victims. But the people like you who don't want to be victims don't want to be successful. If we survived in our childhood uh, by saying lies, yes. now we are used to say lies. Yes, because this lie is part of our defenses. Why do we lie? So we don't get hurt. As simple as that. Everybody lies because they don't get hurt. But, and to avoid uh, suffer. Yes. You see, the pain, we avoid in pain at all costs. But the only way to heal the pain is the pain itself. It's to go to it. You don't go away from it. When someone lies to me, I should tell the truth? If someone lied to you? Yes. Okay. Can you, uh, i tell you what to do. Can you be big enough when somebody lied to you, you don't punish them? But don't do any more business with them. If someone lies to me... Don't punish them. But don't do any business with them. That's all you need to do. This question is very important for everybody, about our mothers and our fathers. Many people have problems with their parents. And they are looking in the wrong direction. The problem is not with our parents anymore. I, w I hope I make it clear. The problem is not what our parents did to us. Problem is, what are we doing with what they did to us? See the difference? Yes. This is where you need to be busy about. Not to go and fix with him the problem. Not to go to speak to him. Not to go to him and tell him you're pushing my button. You need to remove the button. You need to work on you. What dynamic you carry inside of you that affected by him because what our parents did to us, we do it to everybody else. Because we carry a re reaction. If I solve this reaction, our parents will change by themselves because when I see them, I will not provoke them anymore to provoke me again. You see, the biggest mistake people do, they think they can go and speak to the parents again. If they go and speak to their parents, the parents will traumatize them again. 
because the parents will never admit what they did before because if they admit it they go to prison in their mind because they we feel guilty and they know what they've done to us the last thing you need to do is to go to your parents and tell them you did this to me i want to have peace with you they will not cooperate because if they cooperate they will show you and they will admit to you they have done something to you and if they not if they deny it they will traumatize you again you better work on you and see what reaction you have about them and the reaction you have about them is the protection you have and you use against everybody else again it going back to the first question you asked me if you are with them and you're okay they will change because when you see your pa- your father you want him to be something else he feels that from you we don't feel safe in their presence of course and he knows you see but they feel safe uh, okay. in our presence they feel that you are not happy with him and then he protect himself as well from you are you responsible for them let me go a little further i'm just wondering if I have a situation difficult with my parents and I was traumatized by them. I start to take responsibility to make people feel better. Now we're trying to make them feel better. Which you cannot. We our job is not to fix our parents. This is the last thing we need to do. Actually, if we're trying to fix our parents, we reinforce in the problem that happened to us in first place when they could not do anything for us now we reverse everything we want to do it for them we doubling the problem for ourselves it is not your duty but the pattern is coming through when we talk you are taking responsibility for other people because one of the biggest defenses is to be strong for others this can work very well in business in in achieving things but when it comes to human contact and human connection you cannot do it our parents love us right absolutely but they didn't love us the way we wanted we feel unsafe in this world because they did not look at us all the time but they couldn't because nobody looked at them and this is what you asking me and the moment when you were growing and developing as a human being they did not look at you enough they were busy doing something as fighting each other fighting somebody else having a fair busy traveling something they could not give us what we want to be safe in this world this now what i told you is the basis of every other question you ask me jealousy money everything this is it can you see we are so connected don't think that we're talking just like this between us there's a lot of i i i said this many times within 2 3 years from now you, they will show that when two people talk to each other they will actually physically show things move from our brain coming back to each other like even in colors so in the presence of your father if you try to be a saint you are not he will know that you're the devil he will see it in you and he will protect himself by denying and getting upset because he knows that you are not happy with him there is no such a thing as unhappy family or unhappy relationship the unhappy people use the relationship to be unhappy if you are in the presence of your father and feel good about you and about him he will change but you go in there unconsciously there is a revenge we want them to correct what they did to us they will never correct it there is no need to speak to them anymore because the problem is not with them anymore the problem is what we carry in us because of what they did to us can you see the difference between there are two different things people live in a dream world they keep thinking my parents will change one day or i'm going to tell them what they did to me thinking this will fix it it will traumatize him even more so what are you doing inside of you how you protect yourself from people because of what your father did to you i'm talking generally not personally to you 
what am I doing? So what am I doing is, if my mother hurt me, I'm unsafe, I'm careful, I'm angry, I am uh, even violent. And when I have this in my consciousness, when I meet my parents, it is there. And this interact with their own violence also. So we activate each other, and this is what you call the button. What is jealousy? <laughs> so, well, that's the easiest question. Jealousy is comparing yourself with somebody else. That's all. And why do you compare yourself with somebody else? Because I don't feel good about me, so I look at somebody else, and I want to be better than them, so I compare myself with them and I try to prove to people I am better than them because I didn't feel good about me. As simple as that. I don't think it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's enough? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Why would you compare yourself with somebody else? If you truly love a person, yes, you don't even feel jealous at all. You will. The moment I'm jealous, I question loving this person. And why nobody can do this? It's the same. Yeah, the first question you asked me is the most critical question because nobody made me feel safe in this world. If I don't feel safe, the person who with me in the relationship, I will always feel less and I will be jealous because I'm not safe. Do you test your partner if they love you or not? There's no test. Love has no test. Do you ever decide you want to love somebody? Love doesn't ask questions, doesn't test, nothing. So, if you want to solve this, okay, uh, uh, with something to do now, you seek this from your partner instead of your mother. Would you allow your partner to see you vulnerable and to take care of you, to give you back what you missed? Two people can do this, two people. Your partner and a very, very skilled therapist who will not abandon you. And it's very difficult to find because most therapists are traumatized themselves. It has to be someone who had been traumatized and recovered. They know how to make somebody else recover. Or your partner. How do we find a recovered psych psychiatrist? I have to keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you, you ask support from your partner. Will you allow your partner to take care of you? Will you allow you in relationship with your partner in your weakest moments not to run away from them. Can you give me an example? Yes, it's very simple. Um, what happens when you feel very vulnerable and weak? What do you do? I'm trying to be stronger. Okay, this, when it happens again, you go to your partners and tell them, I feel very weak. Uh, can you hold me? If you become strong, yes, you will. This is the defense you have that's stopping you from healing. Because in the childhood, in our childhood, the moment when we're vulnerable, this moment, we need another person to come and to be in our presence, yes, in this critical moment when we're extremely vulnerable and to teach us this world is safe. And this happened in when the brain is developing. And if this person is present there with you, yes, your brain will actually develop a system that I am safe here. If this person is not around, is not holding you, is not, uh, taking care of you, you will do it by yourself, like you're doing now. So when you become vulnerable again later, when you're older, you don't have the system, there is somebody there 
near you yes, can actually take care of you. So you become very strong. The strength you have is actually your defense mechanism. Would you allow your partner to see you very weak? Ask him to stay with you and be next to you. Would you be able to do this? Okay, don't say anything. When you're vulnerable, sit next to your partner and look at them. Can you just look at them? They will know. They will know. Without even saying anything. Can you even sit five minutes without doing something for them? Is that possible? What I'm saying to you is this is not the, the, the best way. Because the best way happens without words. You need some, a lot of work. But this is what you can do at the moment. Would you be able to go towards your partner, not away from them? Let's say it this way. Can you do that? I can try this. Not once or twice. As many times as possible. Uh, this means the repetition is the key. Yes. This is the method, the repetition. Yes. Uh, one of the challenges we have now, and I have with many people when I work with them, is they keep thinking of a way to do it. The, the relationship to me is the only place we heal. It's the only area we can heal. Or a proper, deep, long-term therapy, as I told you before. So can you work with your partner together to make her feel safe and make her make you feel safe? It's two ways. When she's down, you take care of her. When she's up, you also take care of her to celebrate how good she feels and the other way around. Now, if you, uh, which one are you gonna start first? Uh, it looks like a theory. <laughs> it looks, yeah. it sounds very good, yes, but it's, it's not easy. easy. I agree, it's a theory, yes, a theory. But this is what you want. This is what you want to hear. Because if we, this is what you want to hear now. If you work on yourself, this you can manage all this. It will happen naturally. I just remember something important because of our conversation. All our problems in this life related to another person. Only in relationship we are exposed. What happened between you and your mother? It's playing itself out in your relationship now. The same thing, exactly the same. The fear of disconnection, neglect, abandonment, whatever has happened before, is happening here. So what do you need to do? You need to go to the source. And you, there is no way you can do something and something will happen. There's no way. Because there's another dimension. Dimension we're looking at we need to go to these places that you cannot touch anymore and go back and heal them again. And that needs a lot of skills. The short-term work is, is what I told you to do with your partner now. But the long-term work is a different kind of work with a proper therapy work. Do we see our mothers in our partners? It not, uh, you could say that, but, you, but I can say it in a different way. You see the effect of your mother on you and it plays out with your partner. You see the effect it had on you, exactly what I said about your father. It has an effect on you. Your father is not an issue anymore, your mother is not the issue anymore, but the effect she had on you, you have a reaction inside of you. I use this metaphor. The war is over, but the soldiers are still fighting. The war with your parents is finished, but inside of you, somebody's still fighting the war that's over. And you need to talk to these soldiers and tell them the war is finished. But in order for the soldier to know the war is finished, the war is finished, he may have to go back to the war again and tell them, okay, look, now we're finishing it together. Now, in your relationship with your partner, yes? If you allow 
your partner to see you at your worst moment and be there in your partner's worst moment as well then you can heal each other it's two ways not one way because the trauma we have in our life happened to us at the time when there was no thinking it was only feeling there was no thinking in the first two years everything happened and now we're trying by thinking trying to fix it impossible the moment you start thinking you block your feelings we we think if we find a method or a way to do something will be okay there is no method whatsoever the only way I think now or I after all these years of my work is to be with someone as much as possible when you are vulnerable if, uh, when you're small it didn't happen once or twice the rejection disconnection the abandonment happened and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated until now you have a system in your brain that's insecure so when we are vulnerable first thing that come to you I have to be strong all your traumas in your intellect not in your emotions the trauma is emotions so this interview the way you're talking to me it is one level but your trauma is another level our trauma is in feelings not in intellect so what happened is you can deal with your trauma in two ways we can talk about it now and discuss it discuss jealousy discuss pain discuss depression it's not the same as experiencing it can you experience the pain and depression and jealousy can you really experience it and be open and feel the pain of it in the presence of somebody who can take care of you when these things happened to us before our development was sabotaged it, it's our development stopped something else took over which is a protection we protected ourselves from what happened to us before we're talking about it but it will take a huge amount of courage and support to go back to the stages where our development was sabotaged and it need support in the presence of another person I have a different face I have a false personality and the false personality can be angry depressed jealous worried traumatized that is the face you have in relation to another person so because it what happened to you happened by somebody else you cannot do it by yourself we have a false self even this moment talking to us now talking together you talking to me for your false self I'm talking to you from my false self because we are careful we're trying to do a good interview I'm trying to answer your questions and you're trying to ask me good questions <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's another world going on between us another world no, why, why are you trying to make a good interview? I don't know for me, for the others, for everybody for your false self not for you why I'm here <laughs> so people see it and admire me yes this is not us are masks good for something? this is our masks, not us are good the masks they're good to survive for now <laughs> not for the long term these masks will collect as much money and admiration in the world but will never be truly happy Menis, what is the most common fear worldwide being alone and abandonment because this is going back to the first question this what happened to us all of us when we didn't have the connection with the people who brought us to this life and this is in the back of our mind not everybody is so conscious of it 
so we try so hard to compensate for this but we know I have this saying that you can't have enough of what you don't really need so we're trying to get other things but this is not what we need so that fear is always there in all of us I think personally the biggest disease we have in the world is this more than cancer more than anything else is being alone what is your biggest fear? Yeah, the same, like everybody else, of being alone too. Nobody's above this. What I have learned over the years, it is absolutely impossible to help anybody. But to inspire someone? Yes, inspiring people is different. When, when people see you, successful and happy this is the best help to give to people this is very difficult because we are in a culture now and everybody obsessed trying to help somebody else we're doing this because we're trying to compensate of what we have inside that we cannot fix my job is very sensitive very difficult i cannot help anybody and when people come to the courses and hear this from this from me they get very scared because they come and thinking I'll help them. I'm not going to help anybody. I cannot. I don't have that power to help anybody. But if they see who I am and what I'm doing, this is the best help you can do to people. What I'm saying to you now is the most important message the parents need to hear. I, I will remind you of uh, um, uh, a line Gandhi always used to say. He said, be the change you want to see in the world. Be what people want to be. And your presence to them is enough. The moment you try to help them is no good. Because what you will do unconsciously, you will try to, to, to make them do something that you couldn't do. It's like striking back at them. You're trying to compensate for what you cannot do. The only way to help anybody is to be an example for them. And this is what our parents fail to do. They're trying to teach us from a bad example. So what we learn, they're a bad example. It is not what we say to people. It's not what we teach people. It's who we are. Exactly who we are inside. It's our consciousness, it's the teacher. Not what we do, not what we teach, not what we say. Anything you do in your life comes from your own consciousness. Whether you cook, you drive, you are a doctor, you're an engineer. If the consciousness is clear, it comes through your work by itself without making people do anything. If you're angry with anybody, if you hate anybody, you live in their energy field. You carry them straight away because you're thinking about it. This is one thing. If you hate something that anybody doing, yes, because you have it. Do you realize that you are your parents or not? In this life, you are, every one of us, trapped, haunted by everything we hate and everything we love. Every, if you hate anything, it will never leave you alone. If you want anything, it will never leave you alone. You see, you see what I mean? All enemies are the same. Everywhere in the world, all the neighboring country fight because they, they are the same. So what you hate about your father, yes, he's already taught you this and you don't like it. So you see it in him all the time. You will discover that you are the same person. It's, it's a, it, it, there is no one way, it's two ways all the time. So if I'm angry with somebody, I will become like them. You remember in the course we did the game, and what happened? If you fight anybody, you'll become like them. If you resent anybody, you'll become like them. Because you are, you are caught in their energy. 